What's up guys, it's me Packy from the house and as you can see by the title of this video, I am receiving the holy grail of bowling balls, the most expensive ball I've ever bought, the most expensive ball I've ever seen, and I bought it used. Sitting on my doorstep, so let's go pick it up. I spent two years trying to find this ball. It is a quantum double helix or a quantum helix. So this ball, the technology was way ahead of its time for 1996, but I'm gonna go drill it at WSU. I'm gonna bowl two games with it. Hopefully I can shoot a respectable score. Cross your fingers. Give me a sub down below, because when you don't sub, I feel like this. Ah! 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 Let's drill up this holy grail gem of a bowling ball and see what I can do with it. I'm here at the shop at WSU, and today I have the Quantum Helix. $400. It's one of the coolest designs. It's a gem. It is an oldies. It's from 1996 is when I saw the advertising come out for it. So I'm assuming that's where it's from. And I'll tell you a little bit about the design of the ball. As you guys can see, this ball has a massive gold stripe in the middle of the ball. That gold stripe is actually urethane and the black part of the ball, reactive material, which means if you drill it correctly, it should start off with that first flare or those first couple flares on the yellow stripe, which means it's gonna make that smooth urethane motion early, and then it will flare off of that to the black part of the ball. So it was one of these like crazy cool ideas, and I haven't seen a bunch of balls recently come out with this idea, so I'm assuming it didn't exactly roll too hot, but this was, again, like I said, one of the coolest ideas, and I don't know if it panned out too hot. We're definitely gonna find out here in a couple minutes when I show you guys down there how well it rolls, if it rolls well for me. Hopefully I throw it on a house shot as well for you guys, because down there, this ball, Probably no good. So one of the coolest things about this ball is it is right-handed and left-handed versions. I got a right-handed version, but as we talked about when Chris Prather did his upside down bowling ball, this shouldn't matter almost at all. There are three markers on this ball, which is also pretty cool. So you have the pin right here that I'll show you. Right there. And then just like a normal ball, you have the CG, which is right here. And then the third marking, which I bet none of you guys have ever seen before is, I mean, it's a, it's a big pin. That's what I'll call it. I'll call it the big pin. This is the pin that is supposed to be drilled on your axis. So to get the true motion out of this ball, there are, there are two markings that are important, the pin and the big pin. So I'm gonna need to put the pin three and three eighths for my axis and the bigger pin on my axis. I've laid it out to do just that. Here's the little layout for you guys, pin up. So it's a pin-up layout, three and three-eighths for my axis with the big pin being on my axis. Fingers right there, pin up. All right, so with all of that explained in a little too long version, uh, basically I'm gonna put this on the press. It's a three and three-eighths pin. That big pin's going on my axis. I'm gonna drill it now. This cost me a chunk of change and it's one of the craziest balls I'll ever drill. So hopefully it gives me some crazy reactions. All right, so how about this? Our friend Kyle over here. Everyone say thanks to Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. You're so I was gonna have to bring it somewhere else to throw it on a house shop, but Kyle actually oiled something super easy down here for us. It's 40 feet, six, seven, eight to one. So something pretty easy that I can control the pocket on and show you guys what this ball can do. Before further ado, let's just uh, let's just toss the thing down the lane. It starts off flaring on this urethane section and then slowly flares off to flaring on that other section, which is giving the reaction that it was made to. All right, so even though the ball's doing exactly what it's designed to do, start off flaring on that yellow portion of the ball and then flaring off of it. Some of you might be able to notice that it's thumping or skipping down lane. It's making a loud rumbling noise. The two parts of the bowling ball are actually separate materials. And over time, the reactive has shrunk a little bit and the urethane has stayed the same size, which means the urethane section of the ball is sticking up just ever so slightly above the ball. As it flares off of that yellow part of the ball, it's thumping because it's going from black to yellow to black to yellow to black to yellow. So 
it's not hooking a lot down late. I'm gonna give myself the next three frames to warm up and then I'm gonna see uh, what kind of two game total I can put up. Oh! Okay, it's gonna be tough. All right, so this is a house shot. So normally my two game goal would be like 500 or like 480, but I think my two game goal here is gonna be like 400 because this ball is going like dead straight down lane. So I'm gonna need a good spare game and I'm gonna need a lot of really good shots where this one thumps correctly to the pocket. So here we go, two game total. How's that not strike? Finally got one. Hook. Ah, uh, just goes dead straight down lane. Two. Bad shot at it. How's that not strike? So after five frames, I have 64 in the fourth with a spare in the fifth, and I need to figure out where this ball is going to hook, because right now I have no idea, and I don't know if it's going to hook down lane, and I don't know if it's going to hook up front. So I'm going to move left and see what happens, try and square it up, straighter angles. Hopefully it works. We're zoned in now, lined up. I don't know where I stood, though. No, no. Come on! Double. This ball's a jam, Kyle. When it gets all 10, this ball's the best. Oh, that's so far left. Okay, you know what? I can actually ball a good score here. If I play the right part of the lane, imagine that. Four hundreds out there. I got a respectable 400 left. Yeah. All right, I mean, we survived. Well, we had a good run the back half of that game, hit the pocket every shot except the one horrible shot. Through a double, I mean, what more can I ask for? What more can I ask for? I bet every single one of you that likes this video, I'll bet you guys all $1 that I shoot above 220 this next game. I'm just saying. I'm either gonna be really good at editing or it's gonna be a solid game. So let's hope it's just a solid game, but here we go. 220 or bust. That, that brings me to 410, shot 194. Uh, this ball's thumping, but I think once I moved to like five and five left, I was able to actually get it to hook a little bit. I think this 90 year old ball is just, just a little too oil soaked, a little too saucy, thumping, all that stuff, just bad stuff, all that old stuff. Yeah, bad stuff. But 220 the last game or bust. Here we go. 220 or I owe everyone a dollar. Yeah. Bang! 220. Just a small move left. Just pinch it over there, get the seven out. Ugh. All right, here we go. Two for three. Lacing them. Oh, that's bad. Ah, bad shot. Bad focus. 
Bad shot that last one. Gotta focus up here. That's a really good shot. Oh my God, I think it's trucking through the pins. All right, so we are six frames through game two. I gotta get the 400. I told you guys I bet you all a dollar if I shoot 220. I'm on my way. I got strike, eight spare, double, eight spare strike. So I'm on pace to get to 220 and I think I figured this ball out. I just needed to play a little harder and straighter and account for it not to hook in the back end. I don't know whether it's thumping and not hooking in the back end or whether it's, th or whether it's not hooking in the back end because the ball is like 26 years old. I don't know. Either way, I got six shots left to hopefully crack out this 220, shoot like 415, 420 on the, on the two game set. So here we go, 220 for a dollar. Push, push. Boom. That's a double. That was a crucial, a big double there. I think I got a move. Maybe I should just throw it better. Ah! Sick move. Ah! No. Now I'm gonna need a double. Oh my God, I'm gonna need a three bagger. That was terrible. Dang. I need the next three. I need the next two. Come on. One good one here. Get myself to the two teens. You know what they say guys, big time shot requires a big time shot maker. And that's what I hope I am this next one because I need this next one for 220. If I don't get this next one, we're sitting in the two teams. Not good. Still need six. I bet everyone $1 that I would shoot 220. I need six. All right, all right, I got seven, I got seven. All right, so I shot 221, got myself to 415 for the two game set, which is higher than that 400 that I thought. Once I moved left, I really had control of the pocket. Honestly, if we were born a three game set and I got to start over, I think I could probably pop 675, 220 a game. It's, it didn't give me that bad of a motion. It's just, I had to get used to how little it was going to hook because of the thumping, because of the urethane slash reactive, because it's 26 years old, all those factors added together. It just created some crazy motion on the lane. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys sticking along to the end of the video. As always, like and comment and subscribe to the channel. But comment down below what you guys want to see me do next with this ball, because I paid a heavy ticket for it, so I'm trying to use it a couple times. So comment down below, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace. Peace.